I did. All I knew was the person that read the read the wheel told me where I could get a weed from. Come on, oh, that guy. Are y'all with me right now? And I know that my God wants to answer my prayer. Now I didn't never let Kelsey know how I got the weed. It's a lot that I didn't know. And in front of her, I just let her, I just made it play the cool. Like, all right, baby, daddy, got you. When I got from, in front of her, I was like, all right, Lord, we need a week. I don't know where we get a week from. You told me that if I desire anything, what's the way I ask? I'm going to him according to the wheel. I brought the wheel in his presence, and now the Holy Spirit has told me where to go. I'm trying to tell you today that you have a wheel that you've been calling a Bible. That's what the word testament means. It means wheel. And you've been letting that shit on the back seat of your car. And the whole time God is saying, if you never read the wheel, you won't know what's yours. And the enemy can talk you out of stuff that's already yours. And you'll be begging for stuff that's already yours. And you'll be crying about stuff that's already yours. And you'll be desiring stuff that's already yours. But if you find out what's in the wheel, you can be like the prodigal son then, Pastor. You can go to him and say, Father, give me the portions of good that fall into me. Give me what's mine in the wheel. I want, that, I want to receive it right now. And the daddy said, I can't hold it back from you. You know what's yours. You came to me with the wheel, and it's my desire to give you what's in the wheel. Somebody say amen. 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 So that's the first point right there. Point number one is what? Say it loud. Number two, your prayer has to agree with the word of God. So once you know what's in the wheel, Kevin, once you know what's in the wheel, Dr. Honoré, you now have to agree with the word. Amen. Amen. You can't know God wants you to be healed and pray sick prayers. Amen. Amen. Teacher Bishop. Do you hear me, Kelsey? I don't spend my time, listen to me, sweetheart, I don't spend my time praying about problems. I bring the problem there, but I pray about the solutions. Amen. I already know what the problem is, so I don't spend my time talking to God about how big the giant is. I don't go to God and tell my Lord, the doctor said, and the doctor said, that, Lord, if that happens, then you know I'm not going to be able to have a job. And if I can't have a job, then I can't take care of my kid. If I can't take care of my kid, Lord God, then what's going to happen to me, Lord God? Oh, Lord, I'm going to lose my car, Lord God. What am I going to do? Help me, Jesus. I don't pray prayers like that. I go to him and I say, God, you said in your word that by your stripes I am healed. You said in your word, Lord God, that you'll supply all my need according to your riches and glory. You said in my word that what God is joined together, let no man put a son. God, you said in my word. I, I go to him with those type of prayers, said. Now, it don't mean that I don't have problems. I'm just solution-minded. If prayer works, if prayer is going to work, now if it works, if prayer is going to work, do you hear me, sweetheart? You're going to have to pray what God said. Right. Let, me, let me use this as an example. Let me use it as an example. Turn, turn Isaiah 43. We'll use this scripture as an example. Because it's always improper to pray the problem. Lord, you see how these people are talking about me? You see how they're coming up against me, Lord? You see how they're rising up against me? Lord God, what did I do to them? Help me, Jesus. I don't pray like that, but I pray prayers like this. Lord, you said in your word that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. See, I'm lining up with the word right there. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, God said, you hear me? You hear me? Renal, that's your name. Amen. You hear me? Amen. I mean, he said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, you said that I will condemn. Lord, you said that you were, when my ways please you, you will make even my enemies to be at peace with you. Peace with you. You said, Lord God, that the righteous run to you and you are their strong tower and they are safe. You said this in your word, Lord God. That many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver them out of them all. You said, Lord God, that all that live God that shall suffer persecution. See, I'm lining up with the word the whole time that I'm doing it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. You got it? Watch verse 26. Listen to what God says. We'll go to verse 25. Watch what God says. I, even I, am he that blotted out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember thy sin. You see that? Somebody say that's in the word. That's the word. Now watch, watch, watch this. If anybody is reminding you of what you did, it ain't God. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. 
And the church said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now watch verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. What do you mean put you in remembrance, Lord? This is what remembrance means. Let me tell you what it means. This is what it means in the Hebrew. It means to make mention of, number one. Number two, it means to be in agreement with. It is referring to you agreeing to the terms of a contract or a covenant. So when God said something, he says, when you come to me, I want you to mention what I said. Amen. Come here, Chris. Come here, Chris. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I want you, I want you to stand right here in the middle. Stand right here in the middle. Amen. Stand, stand, stand right there. Amen. Amen. And you, 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 you can just stand. You can face there. Pastor Robson, you'll be God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to stand right there. Now, 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 now turn this way, Chris, because God sends the word. Amen. Glory to God. God is always lined up with what he says. The scripture says this. God said, there's one thing I have put above my name. That's my word. Come on, pal. You hear me, Nakisha? They said, that's one thing you put above my name, and that's my word. In other words, God said that if I said it, I'll fulfill it. You can now, I would never lie about nothing I said. So if I can find the scripture on it, I know I can get it. Because God can't lie. And the church said, Amen. Y'all quiet over there right there. Now what has to happen is, you have to line up with the word. Your prayer can't be answered because God is lined up with the word. But you way over here, your feelings. And you too busy praying about how you feel, not about what he said. And you too busy praying about what they're doing and not about what he said. And you too busy, no, the word ain't going to, see how the word is going, God is always moving with his word, amen. And you too busy praying about what you think and not about what he said. And you too busy praying about how they acted at work and not about what he said. But if you would just lose sight of how you feel, what they say, what they doing, how they acting, and say, God, you say it. And if you just line up with his word and pray, and you say that, you will find out that you and God are now in agreement with the same thing. See, I can get prayers answered. If I pray 10 prayers, I get 10 answers. Come on, Bishop. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I know it's big talk right there, ain't it? Amen. Number one, I don't pray nothing that's not in his will. Amen. Number two, I line up and I bring to him his word. When I come there, this is what I give to God. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and hand that to him. And I go ahead and give him what he said. And God will turn around and hand that back and say, all right, now I'm going to give you back what I said so that it can manifest in your life. And I say, thank you, Daddy. Hallelujah. Did y'all get that? Father, I know what the doctor said. I'm not going to be over here talking about what the doctor said and God is over here lying. Because God don't lie over the words of doctors. God don't lie over the words of your bill collector. God don't lie over the words of Sally May. I know we think Sally May big and bad, but God said I'm over here. And over here I said this, so when I slide over God and I'm praying first lady, this is what I say. God, you said that I am the head and not the tail. A lender and not a borrower, Lord God. And I thank you for providing for me. It is then that God then gives me back exactly what he promised me. And I say thank you, Dad. Glory. We've been praying wrong. We've been praying wrong. We've been so busy, caught up on those different feelings those different things that we hadn't been able to bring to God what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Yeah. Come on, give them a hand. Amen. Turn, 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 turn to Philemon 6. That's in the New Testament. Philemon, amen. 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 Philemon 6, amen. It's right after Titus, right after 2 Timothy, amen. Glory to God. Turn there. It's only one chapter, real quick. Verse 6, verse 6. I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. Amen. <laughs> This good to you. Come on, say, say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's my vision. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm excited about it too. Yeah. When you learn this, you're ready to pray. Yeah. Yeah. You're ready to pray. You're saying, come on, give me something to pray about, Lord. You're looking for people around you who need prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Because now you just feel like a prayer vessel. That's what an intercessor is. The intercessor is hearing the voice of the Lord and praying according to the word of God. And then things are manifest in glory to God. 
your prayer vessel then. You're saying, bring me something so that I can pray about. Because God always wants to answer prayer. It's never a time. The Bible said that all the promises of God are yes and amen. On, if I line up with what he say, I know that I have exactly what he say. I'm not going to doubt it. I'm not going to stress another night. I'm not, I can go to sleep after I pray like this. Why? Because I know that me and God are lined up with the same thing. Glory to God. So watch this. I didn't say. See, the word is truth, Pastor. Jesus said that in John 17 and 17, but there he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Come on, somebody say the word is truth. The word is truth. So watch this. Watch this. This is what it says. If the word is true, I didn't say. What the doctor said was an effect. No, what the doctor said is a fact, but it don't make it true. Hallelujah. Okay, let me teach that. This is the key. The doctor can say something that they see, but that don't mean it's true because only what God says is true. So if I stop focusing on the facts and start believing the truth, I will realize that the truth would change the facts. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. There's never a time. How many times, first lady, have we needed a financial need and we decided to believe God and he showed up every time? Every time. Why? Because truth will always change facts. I don't care if I don't have nothing but butter and ice water in my refrigerator. I'm not going to act like it. I'm not going to talk like it. I'm going to line up with what God say. I'm going to act like I'm wealthy. I'm going to act like I got abundance. Why? Because when I act like that and I talk like that and I pray like that and I line up with what God say, he says, let the weak say I am strong and let the poor say I am rich. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to do what he says. And the church said, Amen. you got verse 6? Watch verse 6. Watch what it says. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. Watch what it says. That my faith, the communication of my faith, I communicate my faith the best way. But so I communicate it like this. By me acknowledging was already in me. I don't pray prayers about stuff I'm going to get. I act like Jesus already paid for it. So if he paid for it, well, in other words, that I got to purchase, that I got to go after. For instance, if I buy you a car, not you, I bring you the car, amen. I buy you a car. And I buy you a car, Pastor Rob, and say, hey, man, I just bought you um, a, a brand new Silverado, fully loaded. Amen. And I got it over there at the Chevy dealership. GMC. Amen. You don't like Silverados. Amen. Sierra, I got the E over there, GMC. We ain't buying it nothing now. Amen. Glory to God. I'm just messing with you. Amen. Glory to God. So I buy you a GMC Sierra, and it's fully loaded and everything. And I say, it's over there at the GMC dealership. And then I give you the receipt. The receipt. What is, what is a receipt? Proof of purchase. Proof of purchase, right? Amen. What is the receipt printed on? What is it printed with? Ink. All right. So now I've given him a piece of paper with some ink on it saying I already paid for it. Then he would take the piece of paper with the ink to the GMC dealership and pick up the truck. All this time you've been thinking it's a Bible when God has called it a receipt. God said that I gave you a piece of paper with some ink on it. And I'm telling you to go pick up the stuff. But you still thinking like you got to pay for it. I wish y'all would catch this stuff. See how you see how you trust a natural receipt? You will leave all out the house. David, let's go. Let's go. Let's go get my truck. You be ready. You be ready. He's on the list step, Pastor Rob. We got to step in this step. Let's go get my truck. Be ready. Amen. And we can't even praise God until we see the healing manifest. When we got a receipt in our hand. Amen. You ought to be able to shout off the receipt. 
Yeah. If you were playing the lottery, and then if you were playing the lottery, and you had a lottery ticket right there, and they called your number, you'll start shouting, I won! I won! I won! I won! I won! I won! You'll be doing all that stuff, going crazy, off of nothing but paperwork. If you was in jail, and they sentenced you to a particular time, and then you went to court, and the judge said, we're going to reduce your sentence in it and release you immediately, you will go back to the dorm shouting off of nothing but paperwork. And God said, you got pages of paperwork that you ain't shot about yet, that you won't get involved with yet, so you don't believe my people. And the church said, all right, let's go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Here's the third point. This is the third thing. This is what your prayer needs. This is praying the right way. Your prayer has to consistently confess the possession of it. My time. My time is up. My time is up. Come on, kid. Give me some stuff. My time is up. I'm sure I can. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got it? Read that point back to me, number three. Not only do I need to first, first lady, I need to find out what God said. Don't be intimidated by the Bible because you don't know the scriptures. When I started off, I didn't know, I didn't know one scripture. I knew 0.5 of a scripture. Half of it. I knew God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That's all I knew. We're talking about 1996, 97 right there. I didn't, I didn't know one, half of one scripture. God so loved the world. I thought that was the whole scripture. I thought that was the whole scripture, Dr. Honoré. If somebody would say, what's the rest of it? I said, the rest of what? <laughs> the rest of that scripture. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. And then I went from one scripture to two scriptures, from two scriptures to ten scriptures. From ten, I don't know how many I know now, but I know them now. So don't be intimidated by the Bible. Find out what the will is. Get into it. Get you a Bible with a concordance in the back. Use your phone. Go to your Bible app. Google it. Scriptures on anxiety. Scriptures on fear. Scriptures on 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 on, on, on enemy. Scriptures on. You find it, then you pray with the word say. And when you find it, you pray with the word say. You frustrated that day, then you pray about scriptures on frustration. And you find what it say, and you pray what the word say. And after you find out what the will is, you line up, you agree with the word, and after you agree with the word, you have to consistently confess the possession of it. You have to say that whatever you found out was in the will, that's what you start saying in prayer. And then you gotta leave out of prayer saying, I got it. Turn to Mark 11 real quick. Mark 11. Amen. Mark 11. You can't do this. You can't do this. And trust your senses. Amen. Come on, Pastor Robson, stand up for me. Stand up for me. <laughs> if you are God. <clears throat> if you are God. Here's what you do. You go to him based on what he said. You line up with what he said. And when you leave, you have to leave with a confession that I got what I came for. Now when I leave, my eyes are going to be looking, so you're going to have to tell your eyes, mind your business. Somebody say amen. amen. Your eyes got to, you're right, just definitely stay in your lane. Because you got five senses. What do your eyes do? What do your ears do? What do your nose do? Then you have taste. What does your mouth do? Taste. And then you have touch. What do your hands do? Feel. Touch. Amen. So you got hear, see, taste, touch, smell. You got all of that. Is there ever a time that your eyes would try to smell? Talk to me, church. No. Is there ever a time that your ears would try to, try to taste? There's never a time. Your eyes only do what your eyes are supposed to do, right? So if your eyes can't smell, your ears can't taste, your hands can't hear, 
then don't let your eyes try to believe either. No, you see, my spirit believes. With the heart, man, believe it. Then I'm not going to let my eyes try to do the believing because if you can't do the seeing or the smelling, you can't do the believing either. Glory to God. If you can't do the hearing eyes, then you can't do the believing either. So when you leave, your eyes going to be looking for it. Somebody, you know what I mean, I don't believe it. I don't see it. I must not have it. It must not be God's will. No, I already, I already answered that in my spirit. I know it's his will because I found it in Scripture. And then I brought it to him in scripture. So when I leave out, I have to leave out saying, Father, I thank you for it. It's mine. I have it. I have it now. This is the right way to pray. Watch Mark 11, verse 24. You got to say, I got it. I got it. Watch what it says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray. Do you see that? When you pray. What's the next thing you do when you pray? Believe what? Come on, talk to me. Believe that you what? Receive them. is what it says. Watch what it says. This is what it says. Eric, right? You hear me, Eric? Watch what it says. It says, when you pray, believe you got it. If you came there, I didn't write this. God says, when you pray. Let, let, me, let me back up. Let me back up. Chris, you can move all this stuff. Let me back. I'm done. Let me say it this way. You went to the doctor, and the doctor said that this is what's going on with you. The doctor diagnosed and said, here's what I'm going to prescribe. And the doctor gave you a prescription. When the doctor gives you a prescription, Kevin, this is what you do. You take that prescription, and you go get it filled at Walgreens somewhere, right? CVS, Walgreens, somewhere. When you take the prescription to go get it filled, it is then that you take the medication how they prescribe it. If it takes, say, take two tablets every four hours, then guess how many tablets I'm going to take every four hours? Two of them. Why are you going to do that? Because it's a prescription. That scripture you just read is a prescription from the master physician. That's God telling you how to pray, and then you still want to do it your own way. He says, whatever you desire, God gave you a blank check and then signed it at the bottom and said you can't bankrupt. Whatever you decide to fill this check out for, you can't bankrupt. He says, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. And then the next part say, and you shall have it. So I gotta walk out of your presence and say this. I come into you and say, God, you said, God, you said, God, you said. I believe. God, you say, I allow you to minister to me. I receive, Father. I thank you. It's mine. Glory to God. It's mine. And when somebody say, how you doing? You tell them what the words say. I'm great. I have the peace of God over my life. Amen. I don't care what kind of chaos going on at home. That's what I say. I say that I got what I came for. Amen. That's the prescription. And when I pray that way, Kevin, my prayers answered all the time. Come on and give God a hand of praise. Amen. Come on, then bless you. Come on, come on, come on, say amen. Hallelujah. Ministers are coming, praise came upon the very quick. Amen. Come on, say it with me. Lift your hand and just say it with me. Say, now I know, now I know the right way to pray. The right way to pray. I can't wait. I can't wait to pray. To pray. Glory to God. Every eye closed. Every eye closed. If you are here today. And you heard this message and you said you just don't know how frustrated I've been with my situation. Everything that has been going on, everything that has been happening, everything that has been, and it just don't seem like it's changing. Just stop those things. It doesn't seem like it's changing, Bishop. It seems like nothing is working. And I've just been so frustrated, but you was talking to me today because I needed to know this. If that's you, and you're that person that's saying, I was so frustrated with my situation. Just raise your hand wherever you are. Just raise it up high wherever you are. We don't care who you are. Just raise your hand. 